This is the squat manual you've all been waiting for. Today, we're gonna go hit back squats. I'm gonna explain how I approach the back squat and what I tend to do, what I like to do, and how I like to cue myself to get the most optimal form on my back squat. I'll also explain a little bit about rip ranges, but we'll do uh, RPE, rip ranges, and etc. in a separate episode. For some people, or for me at least, squat is the most nerve-wracking lift out of the big three. So I tend to focus a lot when I go back squat. And that's just because I like to zone in, I like to focus on the movement, I like to focus on how many kilos I have on the bar, and I like to execute the movement. First and foremost, squats are of course for the legs. Um, so you gotta make sure that the legs are warmed up probably, uh, properly, we went through this before. <laughs> Knees, make sure to get movement in. I like to do lunges as a start. So just go forward, get as much knee flexion as possible and go backwards, then swift shift legs and do this. And just do like five on each, two sets of that. Just get the blood flowing to the knees, to the quads, to the hamstrings, to the glutes. Make sure everything is good and great. Other than that, I like to go down and then I like to open up my hips. So like this, try to keep, keep your butt to the floor at any times, like this. This is called hip internal and external rotation. And then, of course, as explained in the deadlift video, if you have anything that's really sore from the day before or like a workout you did in the past, make sure to warm it up properly because we have to make sure you stay safe. We have to make sure everything feels good because if you go into a movement and your body feels great, chances are the outcome will be great. But if you go into a workout and your body feels shit, chances are the workout and the exercise is gonna feel shit. So just think about that. Make sure everything is smooth and tender before you start. Also, Sometimes, depending on how my spine feels, I like to incorporate Jefferson curls. It's one of my favorite warm-up movements. I can do them every day, and it's probably one of the reasons why my spine is very nice to me. It's, I, I, I make sure it's looped up at all times. So, the big question in squat is often, do I squat in heels or do I squat in flats? I have done both. I started squatting in heels and I hit 300. And I had a problem that I keep tilting forward um, because it's like I hit the bottom and then my ass wanted to shoot up. So I thought, okay, my back chain is really strong. You can see that on my deadlift. So I wanted to make my squat a bit more hip dominant. Also talked this through with my coach and I was like, ah, how do we do this and how do we approach this? And typically, when you squat in heels, you have like this, uh, I don't know what it's called in English. <laughs> your, your, your heels are elevated and that means you can get more knee flexion in than usual. But if you are in flats, you don't have as good angle mobility uh, available for you. So. The most common thing you see is the ones that squat in heels tend to stand a bit more narrow and the ones that, that squat in flats tend to stand a bit more wide. And I found out I'm much more powerful in this positioning and I have a much better feel of the floor. So one of the things we talk about in the back squat is you have to keep your feet rooted. And when I say rooted, we have three points on our foot we want to keep rooted. It's, oh, I can't keep balance. It's the heel, it's the bottom of the big toe, and the bottom of the little toe. 
And when I say rooted, it's almost like you want to tuck your feet, like, like when you do a grabbing motion, but just try to do it with your feet instead. That's how you keep your feet rooted to the floor. We'll go through this and combine it later with how we squat, but yeah, squeeze, and then you talk your knees. <laughs> Silas, are we ready to go to war? Yes. Good shit. So uh, let's sit up and do some back squats. Now we're warmed up. Right now I am three weeks out from competition. Yesterday I weighed in at 106.4 or three kilos. That means um, just a bit over one kilo over my competition weight, but we'll manage that. I haven't even caught any carbs yet. So, uh, and I don't think I have ever had a better performance, a lower body fat percentage, and a more motivated mindset than I have right now. It's, it's fucking amazing. I feel so strong. I feel so resilient. I feel so, I feel that my training is going as planned, really as planned and far better than expected. I feel like I could go tomorrow and pull 380, but I know it's probably not possible right now, but at least I have a shot, right? <laughs> Back squat is doing really well, bench press is doing really well, and of course deadlift is doing very, very well. First up, adjust the rack height. Make sure that it's a bit lower than your shoulders so you can squat the bar up and get a good tight grip. No, good tight grip, what the? Step two, squat 300 kilos. Nah, just kidding. Add some weight to the bar. Make sure you take, depending on how heavy you lift, about four to seven warm-up sets I typically recommend. I like to do a little bit more warm-up sets, but a little bit less reps on them. So start with 60 and then you just go plate by plate till I hit 300 and then I make the small adjustments I need to because 300 is a pretty good spot for me to feel where I'm at. I can always squat it and on good days it's an RP5, on very bad days it's an RP fucking 8. So typically, typically when we talk squats we also have two types of placements with the bar. One is a high bar where you go up on your traps and the other one is a low bar when you go under your traps. I do low bar squats, so it looks like this. I do a pretty high low bar. Some tend to have it all the way down here. I don't like the feeling of that. So just under my traps. Yep. As mentioned before, I squat low bar. I have about three things I think about when I squat. First of all, the width of my feet, my stance. So I like to go a little bit outwards with the toes and just about a little bit broader than my hips. So I stand like this when I squat. Some tend to stand more narrow if they have better um, angle mobility. That's it, if they have better angle mobility. I don't have that great angle mobility. I need to use my hips a bit more. So first thing I think about my body weight squats is that stand here, I go a little bit backwards with my butt. You shouldn't do the Kim Kardashian thing. You should tension your abs like this and go backwards. Can you see the difference? Yeah, good shot, good shot. So not like this. Don't sprain your back, tension your core, and get it all tucked in. Once we feel that squat is feeling as squat should feel, uh, we can go up. And as I talked about in the uh, deadlift video, a brace is really, really essential on the back squat. As explained in the deadlift video, a brace is really essential for a back squat and a deadlift. You do the same thing as you do on the deadlift. You suck in your air and pretend that you're getting punched in the stomach by a bouncer at a bar. So, suck in air, tension, core, 
And this time you don't, of course, don't have to think about lengthening your arms because your arms is behind you. But yeah, it's really, really essential. I'll just do this so you can get a front view of how my back squat looks. Let's go a bit forward. Oh, this feels awkward, but anyways, stand in your position. Brace, ass a little bit backwards. Knees forward, position, shoot back up. Brace, knees forward, shoot back up. That probably wasn't perfect, but you get it. <laughs> Next thing I want to talk about is which equipment to use on the back squat. A pair of knee sleeves is not essential, but it's pretty common to use on back squats. It will both keep your knees warm. Some of them will even have added resistance in. So like these, you can see how they're stiff and not foldy. That's because they have a little bit of resistance in. They're really tough to get on and off, but you'll have to get used to it. It's like, uh, this is the uh, A7 rigor mortis in the uh, white version. I've also used the uh, insert before. I like Inser and I, I like Inser very much, but they broke on the uh, sewing. Isn't that what the uh, the stitching part is called? I don't know. St they broke in the stitching part at least. Now I try these. Hope they don't break. And I just got used to them, so I can get them on and off myself. But for beginners, I would just start out with some regular SPD sleeves. They are made out of uh, neoprene and they uh, should do the job for the most part. If you want to be a bit more advanced, you could try just these, but yeah, just go with the flow and see which type of knee sleever you are. <laughs> Second, a belt. And again, a belt is not meant for you to just say, oh, fuck it, I have a belt on, my bag is fine. No, you have to brace in a belt and go watch the uh, depth video if you want an in-depth explanation about that. Last but not least, a pair of wrist wraps. I like to use wrist wraps. Again, it's not essential to use wrist wraps, but back squat puts a lot of sprain on my wrists, so I use them as support. These ones is the ones I uh, developed with Make It, so you can go check them out if you want. They're on Make It's website. It's right here, just zoom in. <laughs> and yeah, this is the uh, logo we got made for the uh, mock meet we all went to. And yeah, that's pretty much all the equipment I use on back squat. I typically put knee sleeves on when I hit 180 kilos. And that's just because I like to feel everything raw before I go in gear. Sometimes it tends to loosen up the pain and make me a bit more zoned in. And when I'm a bit more zoned in, I don't feel as well what my body feels. So yeah, just warm up without, then slip them on afterwards and you should be good to go. So a back squat is a pretty complicated exercise to just, just do a manual on because everybody's built different. Like some have very long femurs, some have short femurs. And when I talk about the femur, it's the, uh, the, uh, the bone in the upper leg right here. If you have a long femur, you should think about it like this. In powerlifting, we always want to hit depth. And what I mean by depth is you go down and you get under 90 degrees, right? But the longer the femur you have, and in comparison to the torso, the more forward you'll have to be to hit that depth. So I don't have as long as a femur, but take example as someone as big. He has a very long femur, where I have a pretty short one, so have pretty good squat leverages. Tends to be, as you see, Chinese weightlifters. They all have very short femurs, and they have a bonkers fucking back squat. If you want to see a guy squat 300 kilos like it's nothing, go search up Tank Muramaki, I think he's called, on Instagram. He's a Japanese weightlifter. He's so cool, man. <laughs> he's so fucking cool. But yeah, that's a squat build. I don't say if you have long femurs, you can't have a good squat. That's not how it's supposed to go. I have an example is uh, Super Saiyan Bob. He has pretty long femur, 
he is also a very wide stance, but he also has a very strong squat. I just say that typically short femur have a more natural way to be good at squat. And that's why there's no one fits all option in back squats. You have to adjust to your body. So if you're out there, if you have a very long femur, it's okay that you go a bit more forward than your short friend. And if you, the short friend out there, like me, have pretty good squat leverages, just utilize it. Okay? So stand with the bar, brace, back with the butt, down in the hole, knees forward, shoot up, and repeat. So now we hit a bit heavier weights and I'll put music on and make the magic happen. Make love to the back squat. These knee sleeves are so tough on my calves. They are so tough on my calves. And I don't know, it's just all the compression. And if I have them on for too long, I, I start not feeling my legs. So it's just get it over with, get the squats done. Right now it was a really shitty day because we had to do all the filming and I got sweaty and had to get my knee sleeves on. And as you can see, I like to have them further up. So once the knee sleeves gets a little bit wet, I'll just pull them even further up, more up on my quad area because this is my knee. This isn't optimal, but yeah, fuck it. Yeah. But anyways, um, I feel like I went through almost everything uh, regarding the back squat. Maybe there's a few things I didn't mention, like open, opening up the hips, like I talked about down in the basement at the warm-up section. We torque our knees, so that means we rotate outwards. Don't overdo it. It's, it's not like you should do like this. Push just, just a little bit to get the glutes engaged, to get the correct positioning for the quads and the uh, hammies. And then, once you want to go down, hit the bottom. Again, deep breath, chest forward, go down, knees forward, and explode up, right? One more thing I had mentioned is the grip width. So the grip width also depends on your shoulder and back mobility, also your chest mobility. But I like to put it as a measurement. I go down, and it's not like your chest has to be stretched out but you should stretch it out by force. You should open up your chest, but close down with your ribs on your belt. So you do like this, this motion. And then you should pull the bar down. So like you would do a pull down in the machine, you should pull the bar down on you so you get the bar conjoined with the weight of your body. That way it will feel more natural and more connected. We were at 300 kilos. Feels pretty good today. Again, I'm three weeks out, so I have to hit some pretty grotesque singles by now. I'll just make this move as fast as possible, and we'll see if we go up, maybe 310. I don't know yet, but I have a pretty good feeling about this. And of course, in case shit goes wrong, safety first. Gonna have to film the last warm up to see if there's anything we should improve on.
head, I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't good. I didn't like that. It was pretty fucking nice I filmed that set because I can see that in the bottom positioning, I got way too deep. It was like ass to grass, 300 squat. It's probably the deepest 300 I've ever gone, but I lost my positioning on the way up. So my butt swifted backwards, and you can see here, I'm in a very uh, difficult position to push myself upwards. And it's almost like the bar moves back. Um, so yeah, of course, I'll improve on that, but still have some squat sessions to go before it's game time. That was pretty validating because 300 kilo has been a concern on my mind for uh, for about a year now. And to feel like did a big misgroove and still got it pretty easy, it's nice, very nice. But yeah, we'll go way heavier next time. And uh, of course, as always, love you guys.